When you're busy running a construction project, it's hard to stop and consider the effects the site can have on the surrounding area. But think about it. Oil spilled on the pavement, eroded soil, even fresh concrete, all become a problem when they are mixed with rain. They pollute the rainwater. This now polluted water drains into the gutters and washes into waterways untreated. When you think about all of the pollutants that exist on a construction site, you can start to understand how runoff from the site does have an impact on nearby neighborhoods and waterways. We realize that working a construction project is an intense job. There are budgets to watch, deadlines to meet, and building specs and codes to follow. We understand how applying stormwater pollution prevention techniques can be overlooked. And while everyone involved may understand such oversights, the bottom line is that it is a violation of the Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Construction General Permit to allow pollutants, including sediment, to be carried from your project site in stormwater runoff. Such violations can result in hefty fines and could create a bad name for your company. The purpose of this video is to give you the basics in stormwater pollution prevention for construction sites as outlined in the Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System or TPDES Construction General Permit. We will explain it step by step to make it easy to understand. Before construction can begin, the site owner, the contractor, or both have to determine which stormwater requirements the project must meet by reviewing the construction general permit. For all projects greater than one acre, you must complete a construction site notice and a stormwater pollution prevention plan, or SWIP, that outlines the best management practices, or BMPs, you will use to control runoff, reduce erosion, contain trash and debris, and control other pollutants on your construction site. If your project is larger than five acres, in addition to the construction site notice and the SWIP, you need to complete and submit a Notice of Intent, or NOI form, to obtain the required permit coverage from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. For all projects, regardless of size, copies of all these documents must be submitted to the local municipal separate storm sewer system or MS4 operator at least 48 hours before any soil is disturbed. Copies of your NOI and construction site notice must be posted at the entrance of the project site and should include your contact information and the location of your SWIP. Once this paperwork is complete, the physical part of your compliance begins. Your SWIP outlines the BMPs that will be implemented during each phase of construction. Before any soil is disturbed, the BMPs for the first phase of construction must be installed. These may include perimeter controls and stabilized construction entrances. As the project progresses, additional BMPs will be required. Let's look at a typical site to study some common BMPs. Consult your SWIP to see which of these will be used on your project. Your first line of defense for keeping pollutants from leaving your site is BMPs for perimeter control. When installed properly, these BMPs allow water to leave your site but retain soil behind them so it can't be carried off into the storm sewer system or local bodies of water. It is important to install perimeter controls before any clearing and grading begins. Options for perimeter control include silt fences, filter socks, and vegetative buffers. Once you have protected the perimeter, you will need to stabilize all of the entrances and exits to and from the site. Nothing will get you into trouble faster than obvious tracking of mud and sediment from your project site onto public streets. In the eyes of regulators, dirty streets around a construction site act as a red flag advertising the fact that you have compliance problems. One of the most common ways to stabilize entrances and exits is to install a layer of geotextile fabric covered with 2-inch aggregate rock. This gives you a hard surface that stops heavy equipment from sinking into the mud and also helps to clean tires of dirt picked up from the site. Other entrance stabilization methods include using geogrids and pea gravel. If vehicles from your site still track sediment onto areas where it can be washed into the storm drain system, you must conduct regular street cleaning to remove the sediment. Now that you have taken care of the perimeter and have stabilized the entrances, you can proceed with clearing and grading. 
Your SWIP may specify a phased approach to clearing and grading to limit the amount of soil that is disturbed at any given time, which in turn limits erosion. Using this approach, grading activities and construction are completed and the soils are effectively stabilized on one part of the site before grading and construction begin on another part. Regardless of whether the construction is phased or the entire site is cleared at one time, every area where work has been finished or areas that will sit unworked for at least two weeks must be stabilized. For temporarily stabilizing most areas, you can use sod, grass seed, geotextile fabric, or mulch. Your next line of defense includes a series of devices used to help control the transport of sediment from your site. We recommend that you install sediment control BMPs anywhere that bare dirt meets pavement or another surface that will transport sediment when it rains. For protecting storm drain inlet openings, acceptable BMPs include sand or gravel bags, mulch socks, reinforced fabric inlet barriers that can be used at curb inlets, or bags that can be deployed around drop or area inlets. These measures work by causing the runoff to pond temporarily before it enters the storm drain. This delay allows the sediment to settle out of the water entering the drain. It is important to remember that any sediment or debris built up behind the BMPs must be cleaned up and disposed of properly. Another area where sediment transport needs to be curtailed is where bare soil meets newly installed paving, the streets, parking areas, and driveways within the site. Back of curb protection can include silt fences, mulch socks, and vegetative buffers. During construction of a new subdivision, dirt can also be tracked from individual lots into the streets through the curb cuts before driveways are poured. It is important to protect these areas with controls like sand or gravel bags and mulch socks. In many larger developments, the internal storm drain system collects stormwater and directs it to a permanent detention pond before discharging it to the municipal storm sewer system. These permanent ponds are often used as a settling basin during construction for final removal of any sediment that has been picked up by stormwater running over the site. It is important to stabilize the slopes of the pond immediately after it is constructed to prevent erosion of sediment from its slopes. The amount of sediment washing into the pond should be checked and removed regularly during construction so the pond continues to drain properly. The pond must be cleaned and regraded at the end of the project to ensure it still meets original design specifications. Another source of pollutants on a construction site is material stockpiles. To keep these materials from being washed away by rainwater, they should be placed on natural ground behind perimeter or back of curb BMPs. If you must place the materials on impervious surfaces, such as concrete, they must be contained and stabilized. Chemicals used on your site also require special attention. This includes fuels, concrete sealers, solvents, and any other chemicals that could pollute stormwater. Chemicals should be held in secure, weatherproof containers placed as far away as possible from the storm sewer system and natural waterways. If a spill does occur, the extra distance will give you more time to intercept the spill and clean it up before it reaches nearby bodies of water. Consult your SWIP and governing regulations for more details on how to properly store chemicals and handle spills. Temporary sanitary facilities are another potential source of pollution. Although you may have contracted with a waste company to empty and clean them, you are responsible for ensuring that they don't pollute stormwater runoff. These temporary restrooms should be located at least 25 feet away from storm inlets, flow lines, natural waterways, and traffic circulation. The wastewater from these units should never be discharged onto or buried within the project site. They should be serviced regularly by a reputable sanitary waste management contractor. Most projects will involve pouring concrete, another material that will pollute stormwater. For this reason, your SWIP and site plan must designate a concrete washout station on site. The concrete washout area must be constructed so it will not allow any wash water into the streets, storm drains, or local waterways, and it should be large enough to contain the maximum amount of spoils that could possibly be left in a given day. Be sure to provide adequate signage for the concrete washout station and clean it regularly.
The final source of pollution is general trash and debris that can be washed off-site by stormwater. Trash and debris should be contained and disposed of properly to prevent polluted runoff. Concrete flat work should be kept free of dirt and debris throughout the duration of the project because these pollutants are easily washed into the storm sewer system by rain. Regular street cleaning can help you keep these pollutants under control. In addition to the specific precautions we have already covered, the site operator or contractor must inspect a site's stormwater BMPs weekly or once every 14 days and after every rain event of one half inch or more. No matter which schedule you use, it is always a good idea to inspect your site when rain is expected to ensure no pollutants can leave your site. Regular inspections are essential because they can help you catch problems early and prevent bigger problems down the road. Keep in mind that the inspections performed by local or state officials do not replace the need for weekly inspections conducted by the site operator. After every weekly inspection and after every post-rainfall site inspection, an inspection form noting any problems or changes must be signed and filed in the SWIP. You should know that if your inspection forms aren't current and accurate, there could be expensive fines, and if there is evidence of tampering or falsification, jail time could be levied. After you conduct an inspection, you must update the SWIP with any changes you have made to the BMPs. Think of the SWIP as a living document designed to change as conditions on the job site change. If you see a BMP that is failing or implemented in the wrong place, discuss making changes to the SWIP with your engineer. Be sure to document all changes to the SWIP. Failing to make changes when needed and documenting those changes are some of the most common violations. Remember, one of the most important people in protecting water quality at a construction site is the on-site operator. That is the person who must make certain that the required BMPs are in place, maintained, and inspected regularly. Maintaining BMPs during construction is crucial. All of your hard work, not to mention your compliance with the regulations, can be destroyed by subcontractors who disregard your BMPs. To ensure that your BMPs stay intact and perform properly, you must let your subcontractors know that you will hold them responsible for repairs if they damage the BMPs. As the designated operator at the site, you will be the one facing fines and penalties if the BMPs are not in place and functional. After construction is complete, final stabilization of a project is required. Final stabilization is defined as all unpaved areas being 70% covered with natural vegetation. This step reduces the possibility of any additional erosion occurring once you leave the building site. Your responsibility for maintaining stormwater BMPs is only complete when the site is fully stabilized. Once construction is complete, the site has been stabilized and all temporary BMPs are removed, the owner, the contractor, or both file a notice of termination. You cannot file this notice until there is a complete final stabilization. While this video mentions several best management practices, it is not meant to be a complete list of sediment and erosion control techniques. Other methods than those suggested here may be used as long as they are effective at keeping sediment and other pollutants from your site out of the storm sewer system. So that covers the basic steps for stormwater pollution prevention at construction sites. To summarize, there are six main elements for staying in compliance with stormwater regulations. 1. Get permit coverage. File your notice of intent and know the terms of the permit. 2. Make sure your SWIP is prepared on time and covers everything it should. 3. Install the BMPs that are called for in the SWIP. 4. Inspect and maintain the BMPs. 5. Stay on top of your inspection logs and record keeping. 6. Close your permit. File a notice of termination when you are finished. By implementing the measures discussed in this video, you will be keeping sediment and other pollutants from leaving your site, so your project will be completed with minimal environmental impact to nearby creeks, bays, and bayous, and surrounding neighborhoods where people live work, and play.